Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and this is a brief review of balancing equations. Now, balancing equations falls under the topic of stoichiometry, where stoichiometry is referred to as the counting of atoms. Stoichiometry has a Greek root to it. Okay, now we want to, folks, we want to follow the law of conservation of matter, or the law of conservation of mass, Okay, where matter cannot be created or destroyed in normal chemical reactions. Um, I say normal chemical reactions because when we get to chemistry 2, um, we'll see that in nuclear chemistry, um, matter can be actually transferred to uh, energy, and that's called mass defect, but we'll talk about that later when we get to chemistry 2. Now, it's critical that we know, mm -hmm. folks, that a reactant, a reaction has two sides to it. A chemical reaction has two sides to it. It has the reactant side, which is the side over here. It also has a product side to it. And you know which side is which by finding out where the arrow is. This arrow is very important. Okay, it means something is created, something is made, something is yielded. Okay, so makes, created, or yield. That's your arrow that separates your reactant side from the product side. Okay, now simply what's happening in a chemical reaction, guys, is uh, the fact that you have atoms, they are rearranging, okay, in terms of their electrons, and they are creating new substances. Now, the rearrangement is based, once again, on valence electrons. Um, if the substance is covalent, um, there will be sharing of those valence electrons to create something new. And if the substance is ionic, there will be transfer of those, of those electrons to create something new. Okay, so we're going to move on. Now, before we get into the actual um, balancing of equations, we must make sure that we follow the right rules. And we will be using something called coefficients, okay, to help us balance equations. Now, um, I know we've heard of the word coefficient in math, and it's basically the same principle. Coefficients will be going in front, in front, in front of your variable, or in our case, in front of our elements or compounds, okay? All right. Also, guys, um, it's critical that we also know this. You cannot change any existing subscripts. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, for example, if I had H2O, if I had NH3, I cannot say to give myself a benefit or to fix hydrogen. I cannot say, okay, I'm going to change the, this subscript of H2. I'm going to change it to H3 to, to balance my equation. I can't do that. That's a major violation. Okay, likewise... I cannot change this subscript right here. I can't change this N to a 2. I cannot change this 3 to a 4. Okay, I cannot do that. That's a major violation. That will get you absolutely no points. So we must make sure that we, at the very least, follow those, those two rules right here. Okay, what are we doing? We're trying to do, we are trying to simply get an unbalanced equation balanced using coefficients. Okay, and they always go in front. All right, now guys, before I move on, I got to stress please use trial and error. Now, we all have heard that term before, simply meaning we can try it. If you get a mistake, if it doesn't work out, you try again. You don't panic. You don't give up. Okay, so we move on. Okay, now, number four is our first example that we did in class well, to open up balancing equations. So we'll just go over that again real simple. I had a little chart that I used, but when you're balancing equations, in reality, you really don't need a chart. All you're doing is you're looking to see what's on the reactant side, you're looking to see what's on the product side, and you want to make them equal in terms of the atoms, all right? Very important, the atoms, you want to make sure they're equal. And you're using coefficients to do that. Now, so we're going to do, we're going to look at hydrogen right here. Hydrogen has two, there's two of them right there, and there's two hydrogens right here also. So hydrogens are okay, they're balanced in terms of hydrogen, the element hydrogen. Now we look at oxygens, we see that there's two oxygens right here, because we're looking at the subscript right there, and we look at this subscript, there's only one oxygen on the product side. So simply, we take a coefficient, and we put it in front. Now what coefficient are we going to use? We will use the number, yes, we will use the number 2. So we put a 2 right there, okay? And we check again. Now, we were doing this in class, and some students started screaming, but the hydrogen doesn't change, the hydrogen will change. Okay, yes, the hydrogen will change, and we're not going to panic, though. We have two oxygens here, we have two oxygens here, because remember, the 2, the coefficient, distributes right through, but now we have 
four hydrogens on the product side. So what we simply do, folks, we take another two, we put it in front of this hydrogen right here, and we have two times two here, that gives us four. We have two times two here, that gives us four. In our case, we have four hydrogens on each side. We have two oxygens on each side, and your equation is balanced. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next one, number five. Now, for number five, if it looks a bit more involved, but if you notice, we have a P word, we have a polyatomic ion right here. Now, the trick you can use is, if you have the same polyatomic ion on both sides, you can treat it as a whole unit, meaning this. Right here on my reactant side, I have NO3, I have one NO3. On this side right here, I have NO3 again, but I have two of them, okay? So I can say to myself, since I only have one NO3 on this side, I will put a two in front of it right here, okay? So now I am balanced in terms of NO3s, okay? I have two NO3s on each side. Now, since I just did that, again, the two distributes right through, okay? We have two AGs right here, okay, on this side, but we only have one here. So we're not going to panic. We simply put a... Yes, we put a 2 in front of the AG, giving us two AGs on both sides. Let me check it again. Now we have two AGs, okay, on this side right here. We have two AGs right there, so AGs are fine. We have two NO3s. We have two NO3s, so NO3s are okay. And magnesiums, we have one magnesium and one magnesium. You only use coefficients where needed, folks. If you don't need a coefficient, you leave it, and it's understood it's okay. All right? And we're moving on. So what's going to happen with the rest of these numbers, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? I want you to pause the video and practice it. Don't worry about making mistakes or whatever. It's fine. You learn from your mistakes. Okay, practice 6 through 10, and uh, we'll explain. We'll work it out together. Okay. In this example, number six, we have Al right here, and we have Al on the other side. And we notice that there's only one on the reactant side and two on the product side. So what do we do? Yes, mm. we put a two in front of this guy right here, okay, to fix the Al's. So now we have two Al's on both sides. Al's fine. Now we can check the next element, which is Br. Now we have the little three right there in terms of subscript, okay. But remember, we have this 2, which distributes right through. So that's 2 times 3, giving us 6 BRs on the reactant side. So we need to fix BR on this side. We only have 1 there, so we're going to put a 6 in front of this guy right here, okay, to fix our BRs. So right now, our ALs and our BRs are okay, all right? So we're going to check again. And uh, we look at our Ks. We have 2 Ks right here. Alrighty, and we have six right here. All right, so we're not going to panic. We see ourselves okay. We have two on one side, six on the other. So what we're going to do? We put a simple three in front of here. Okay, so now we have three times two is six, and six on this side. So this the K's are okay. We have six BRs and six BRs. The BRs are okay. We have two ALs and two ALs. The ALs are okay. And let's check our SO4s. We have three SO4s right there. And we have three SO4s because it distributes right there. So it's totally balanced. Another way you could have done it, you could have started with SO4s. You can set to yourself, okay, I have one SO4 right here. I have three SO4s right here. And put the three in front. That would have been also good. Okay, so either way, you could have done it so it's flexible. All right. The next equation has CH4. O2, CO2, and H2O. Okay, so let's check the carbons. The carbons seem to be okay with one and one on each side. We go to hydrogens. We have, it's hard a little bit to see a bit, but we have four hydrogens right there. And we have only two hydrogens here. So how do we do what we do? We simply put a two in front of the water molecule here, giving us four hydrogens on this side because the two is going to Multiply that subscript by two is giving us four. We have four and four. Hydrogens are okay. So right now our carbons and our hydrogens are fine. Okay, we look at the oxygens. Now we see that we have two oxygens right here. Alrighty. Now we have to be careful on the product side because we have oxygen in two different places. We have two oxygens right here. And we also have two oxygens right here. 
All right. So 2 plus 2 gives us, yes, 4. So how do we get 4 oxygens on this side? We simply put a 2 right here. Okay, and 2 times 2 will give us 4. All right. So that's our coefficient right here. The 2 in front of the O2 and the 2 in front of the H2O. All right. And you check it again. 1 and 1 carbons. Okay, 1 and 1. We have 4 hydrogens and 4 hydrogens. Okay. And 4 oxygens and... 2 plus 2, 4 oxygens. Okay, and that's done. Alrighty, so we move on to number 8. Now, this number is a bit hard to see, but we have C3H8. We start with the carbons. We have only 3 right here, and this guy has just 1. Okay, so we simply put a 3 in front of this one, okay, to make sure that we have the same number of carbons on each side. Now, we check the hydrogens. Now this guy right here, we have eight of them, all right? And we only have two right here. So what do we do? Yes, we'll put a four in front of that hydrogen to make it eight. Now we check our oxygens, all right? Once again, we see that we have just two right here. Not a problem, but we have to be careful again. Three times two is six, okay? And four times one is Okay, so remember there are oxygens on both sides, but we have two locations for oxygens on the product side here and here. So we have to add them up. Three times two is six. Four times one is four. Six plus four is, yes, ten. So we have ten total oxygens on that side. How do we make this side ten? Simply put a five in front of that O2. That will give us ten. You check it again. We have three carbons, three carbons, we have eight hydrogens right here, we have eight hydrogens right here, because four times two is eight, we have five times two, ten oxygens, we have six here, and four here, six plus four, ten, gives us ten oxygens, that equation is balanced, okay, now moving on, we have eight carbons over here this time, so what we're going to do, we're going to put an 8 in front here, all right, giving us 8 carbons. Now, we're going to look at the hydrogens. We see that we have 18 hydrogens right here. We look at our H2O, we have only 2 right there, so we're going to put a 9 in front of that guy right there. Okay, so that's going to give us 18 hydrogens. We have just 2 oxygens right here, so we're going to check our oxygens on this side, our product side. Now, 8 times 2 is... Yes, 16. And 9 times 1 is 9. Okay, so we're going to say 16 plus 9 is 25. Now, this might present a bit of a problem to some of us. We may say, oh my gosh, what's happening? It's an odd number. How do we get it to be you know, even and whatever? So we're not going to panic. We simply ask ourselves, what times 2 okay, will give us 25? All right, and we're going to say, oh man, this is going to be a decimal, right? It's going to be 12.5, all right? Now, technically, we can have 12.5 moles of something. That's no, no problem, but we actually can't have 12.5 molecules, all right? So what we're going to do, folks, we're not going to panic. We're going to fix that decimal. And now, remember what we did when we we're doing empirical and molecular formulas, um, especially empirical formula, finding empirical formula from percent composition. If we got a decimal as our ratio, we simply multiply it to a whole number. And the number that we used when we got 0.5s was, yes, was 2. So what we're going to do, we're going to multiply that 12.5 by 2. And as we said before, if you do something to one of the, the objects, one of the factors, we must do it for everything. So we're going to multiply this whole equation by 2, okay? So what's going to happen? You'll get 2 times C8H18. You'll have 2 in front of there. This 12.5, okay, so 2 will be for the C, C8H18. The 12.5 will turn to 25, okay? The 8 right here will turn to 16, and the 9 will turn to 18. Okay, so these will be the coefficients in order 
for number nine. Okay, so once again, if you get a, a situation where you have a uh, 0.5 decimal in it, you don't panic, you multiply everything by two, and that fixes it for you. Okay, and the last one is number 10. Okay, we have FeCl3, NaOH, FeOH3, and NaCl. Okay, there's a number of ways you can do it. Well, if you have polyatomic ion OH right here, there's only one of them. And there's OH3 right here, there's three of them. So you can place a three in front of that Na. It distributes, so we have three OHs right now, and three OHs right here, so OHs are okay. All right, and we move on, and we check the rest. We just saw that we put a three in front of the NaOH, right? So now we have three Na's. Okay, so we put a three in front of that Na to make that um, balanced in terms of product and reactant side. We have three Na's on both sides. Now, doing that causes us to have three CLs right here. So, do we have to fix anything? We check the other side. Hey, good. Look, we have three CLs already over there, so we don't have to do anything. We have one Fe right here and one Fe right there. So our equation is balanced. So once again, we have one Fe and and one Fe on each side. We have three CLs and three CLs. We have three OHs, three OHs, three NAs and three NAs. And it's all balanced. So once again, folks, please use trial and error. When you're doing balanced equations, if you do it the first time, it doesn't work out. Not a problem. You try again. And as always, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. Please study, folks. That beats anything. And I'll see you guys soon in class. Take care.